Hey, 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 friends, this is Carrie, and welcome back to I Like Reddit channel. Today we have some stories out of the Entitled Parents subreddit. Let's begin. Our first story is by Too Lazy to Think. EM pisses off a goat. I'm a happily single 39 year old male. I live in a nice neighborhood just outside of town. My neighborhood is a single street with about two acres per house. I still look like I'm 18 if I shave. Baby goats are called kids. A little background for you. Players. EM, entitled mother slash kid thief. Me, hmm, D, deputy, CN, cool neighbor, and S for sheriff. Two weeks ago, my goats had two kids. I don't know if you've ever seen baby goats in person, but they are adorable. My male goat, Bruce, is a Nubian goat, and my female, Lily, is a fainting goat. They had a male and a female. The male, Sir Flops a lot, and the female is Esmeralda. If I knew how to post pictures, I would. I obviously love my animals. My neighbors love my animals as well. They feed my dog leftover steak any opportunity they can. Their daughter visits with the goats every day and has been excited for the two new goat babies. She also named them. Yesterday was like any normal Sunday. I usually take my dog for a car ride and then we walk in the the local park for an hour or so. My phone rang from cool neighbor, alerting me to a random minivan sitting in my driveway by the garage. I live in eastern Tennessee. Minivans are not too popular. My neighbors were just letting me know that someone was sitting in my driveway. I wasn't expecting anyone, and I don't know anyone with a minivan. So I told them that I didn't know anyone with a minivan and that I would be on my way back. I was about 30 minutes away. They rang back and said that some lady got out of the got out and ran down to where I have my goat pen. I have my goat pen split at the moment to separate Bruce from the kids and Lily. Male goats sometimes play too rough with kids out of jealousy. When I arrived home, I pulled down into my driveway where I was met by Bruce standing on the hood of a beat up looking minivan. Also the sheriff and some police from town were in the upper driveway slash parking area talking to some fat lady. I parked in the driveway behind the minivan and asked Bruce what he was doing out. Obviously he didn't answer, but the fat lady came running over screaming at me that she was going to sue my parents and I needed to get them there right away. The sheriff and the police officers were right on her heels and caught her before she made it to me. It may not be verbatim, but it's what I recall. EM, you're in so much trouble. This goat attacked me. Then it destroyed my minivan. Get your parents here this instant. Me, what the F are you doing on my property? Sheriff, sir, is this your goat? Me, yes, that's Bruce. Sheriff, this lady claims that it attacked her and her car when she pulled into the driveway to turn around. My neighbors came out when they heard the commotion. Cool neighbor. She didn't pull into to just turn around. She went down to the goat pen. We have her on video. Sheriff, I need to see that video. Me. If she did go down to my pen, I'll also have it on video from the pen to the house. The fat lady was sweating and starting to back up like she was going to make a break for it. She backed right up into the deputy. The look on her face was absolutely horror. The sheriff. Could you put your goat away? Me. No problem. Give me a few minutes and I'll get the video recording from the pen while I'm down there. I put Bruce away and noticed that he had destroyed the fence right about right by the gate to his side. I also noticed that the gate to the kid's side was unchained and Esmeralda was missing. I grabbed the SD card and ran up the hill screaming that I was missing a baby goat. That I was missing a baby goat. Me. Where's my baby goat you dog face bench? EM, how dare you talk to me like that? Sheriff, ma'am, if you know, now's the time to tell. EM, I don't know what you're talking about. Look at my van, it's ruined. I need an ambulance after what this gosh darn, not what she said, goat did to me. Bruce got out again, came charging back up the hill and climbed back on the hood of the van, screaming his head off. It dawned me on me that she put Esmeralda in the van, but the police officers were quicker. Deputy, ma'am, open your van, sir, control your goat. Goat. Me. I'll try, but his fence looks like he beat the hell out of it with anger. I put my dog harness on him and clipped him to the dog run. She kept giving excuses why she won't open her van, but we all knew the real reason. She opened her van and finally the stench rolled out of it. EM. Oh my god, what's that smell? Scared baby goats. Crap, dumbass. You're lucky the cops are here. EM. Your goat ruined my new van. You'll be hearing from my lawyer.
lawyer. Sheriff. You'll get to speak to him after we get you back to the station. Cuffer. I took Esmeralda back and checked to see if she was hurt. She wasn't, just scared. My neighbor's daughter carried her back down to the pen and I grabbed another panel to fix where Bruce broke out. The deputy took the crazy lady away. The sheriff and my cool neighbor came in to watch the security footage. Apparently, she snagged Esmeralda and was coming back for Sir Flops a lot when Bruce broke out. You could see her turn around and start waddling up the hill and Bruce charging right for her. She got nailed right in the hip and he got her again in the shoulder as she got up. She shoved Bruce down and tried to get in her van, but Bruce rammed her driver's side door. He then jumped slash climbed onto the hood and was tap dancing his anger out. We were played her getting nailed in the hip many times. The sheriff was laughing. We were all laughing. A few things that, or at least questions I have about the whole thing is, what was she planning on doing with the goat? I mean, this kind of sounds like a woman who had no foresight whatsoever. I mean, I'm not saying that I think that she should grab or steal somebody's animals or something like that. I'm not saying that one bit, but just what are you going to do afterwards? Uh, I mean, a goat is not a cat or a dog. I mean, you don't care for it the same way you would, you know, a house pet. And so what did she think would happen? I mean, and I'd also want to know where the heck she she actually got the information that this guy had goats. I mean, did she just decide on a whim as she's driving by on the highway going, oh, look, there's goats over there. I better see if there's anybody home so I could steal one. I mean, I don't know. This woman just seems like a complete loon bag. And hopefully uh, she got a couple of years for this. Or I don't know. With the way our justice system is, she's probably out in like a week. Anyway, on to the next story. Our next story is posted by Call Me Crazy. Ian lectures me about vaccines in a baby clinic. This happened today and I'm still pretty angry about it now. Today was the usual baby clinic day at my local GP's office. Parents take their young to the GP to get them weighed, checked over, and get advice from healthcare professionals. You get the drill. I haven't lived in this area for very long, and as a result, this was my first visit to this particular baby clinic. The reason, you might ask, for my visit? To get my child the vaccinations he needs so he doesn't get sick. I have a one-year-old son as well, and a three-year-old son, and a five-year-old daughter. The elder two were in school, so I only had to worry about dealing with my youngest. He's usually pretty calm and happy, but today he was grisly and upset because he wasn't and isn't very well. It's just a cold, so he could still have his vaccinations without problems. We had already been into the room to get him weighed and checked over. All's good. The health visit gives visitor gives the go-ahead for him to get his vaccination. Great. We go back into the waiting room and wait for him to be called. The room for weighing and the room for vaccinations are on either side of the waiting room, and the parent that goes to the baby clinic knows what both rooms are for. I sit down with my grisly, grumpy one-year-old and try and keep him entertained, which mostly works. He's still a bit whiny. Enter EM, who sat a row behind me, but off to the side so I could still see and talk to her. She has her baby in a buggy next to her, sound asleep by the looks of it. EM. Is your boy okay? He seems really unhappy. Me. He's fine. He just has a cold. EM. Ah, I see. Kids always catch that stuff, huh? Me. Yeah. It doesn't help that my older two are in school, so they're always bringing colds like that stuff home. EM. Oh, I bet. Nothing at this point gave any indication that she was an EM, so I carried on my casual conversation with her. The nurse walks out of the vaccination room and goes to the desk to get some paperwork and goes back into her room. She stops just before she goes in and turns to me and says, Nurse, we'll be ready for you soon. Don't worry. I nod and smile to her. Great. The sooner the vaccinations are over and done with, the better. I'm pro-vaccination. But that doesn't mean that I like my kids being in any kind of pain, even for their own sake. The cries during the injection really break my heart, so I just wanted to get it over with. EM. Is your son having his jabs today? Me. Yes. Not my favorite, but it's for the better. EM. No. No, it isn't. Vaccines do more harm than good. Any doctor worth their salt will tell you the same. Me. Well, I think it's what's best for my child. 
EM. No, no it isn't. It will make him autistic. He won't be able to be a normal child. He'll have no friends and will have to do those awful meltdowns that autistic kids have. That's why my son hasn't had any and will never have any. Now this really pisses me off. My five-year-old daughter is most likely autistic. She doesn't have an official diagnosis yet, but the healthcare professionals we've been to see and her teachers all agree that it's pretty much guaranteed that she is. Me. Are you serious? Do you know anything about autism at all? EM. I know it's caused by vaccinations. Me. Mimics her voice for the first part. No, it isn't. Nobody knows what causes autism. EM. I've looked into it and vaccinations will make your son autistic. I saw stuff on the internets and it's true because the internet says it is. Me. No it isn't, but they will keep my children happy and healthy and less risk of catching and or spreading a really nasty disease. The screen at the front of the waiting room indicated for me to take my son to the vaccination room and I just couldn't resist turning and saying me. And by the way, my daughter's autistic. She's had her vaccinations. She's happy and healthy at five years old. I hope that nothing that could be stopped by jabs happens to your son in the next five years. Maybe if your son doesn't get his jabs and has autism, maybe you'll be a little more informed and a lot less ignorant. I turned and practically ran into the vaccination room before she could say anything else. My son had his jabs. He's okay, still unhappy and grisly, but that'll pass in a few days. EM was gone when I came out. Moral of the story, don't tell parents of autistic kids that vac vaccinations cause autism. It's a dick move. Karen sounds like the type of moron that believes anything and everything you read online is all true. No BS anywhere online. Anyway, on to our final story. Our final story today is posted by Spice and Chili. EM tries to bully me at Splashpad after I asked her kid to stop harassing my two-year-old. This happened a couple of years ago, but I just remembered it and think it would fit here. Before I tell you my story, I have to tell you a bit about myself. I look really young for my age. I'm 30, but I could easily pass for early 20s. I also look very non-threatening and a bit ditzy. In reality, I come from humble beginnings and I have a very interesting childhood where fighting, literally, for my place was common. I got myself out of poverty as an adult and cleaned myself up, got a good job and moved into a nice area, etc. Now to the story. So I'm at a splash pad with my kid when this big kid, probably eight, starts splashing my son in the face, hard. My son tries running away, but the kid follows him, splashing. I look around for the parents, but I don't see anyone taking interest. I stand up and walk over to the kid and leave enough space between us so it doesn't look like I'm hovering over him. I firmly and loudly, there were other kids there screaming, ask him to leave my son alone. I then walk away and sit down. Before I know it, this old lady, which I'm assuming was his grandmother, is standing above me, within reach, telling me I can't talk to her kid that way. I explain everything I wrote above, but she continues to literally bitch me out. And then she puts her fingers in my face and starts waving it. At this point, I'm still keeping my cool, not shouting back and asking her to get her hands out of my face. She's having none of it and keeps at it. Remember how I said I came from humble beginnings? Well, I stood up and told her to get the hell out of my face and back off. She's blocking my way at this point and I can't even see my kid. I finally stand up, step towards her and go, what the hell are you going to do? Run up or shut up because I've had enough of your crap here. She goes to sit back down quietly and her husband, an elderly man, starts telling me that from his seat, I can't talk to her that way. I go, I will talk to her however the F she deserves to be talked to if she gets in my face again. I feel bad because this interaction cleared out the entire splash pad within 30 minutes. Part of me feels embarrassed to this day that I allowed that side of me to be to resurface. But some people lack boundaries. And if you're gonna act crazy, be prepared for crazy to come back to you. This lady totally sized me up and thought that she could bully me. I've never gone and put my fingers in someone else's face. 
Maybe because that of how I grew up? I know getting in people's faces guarantees a butt kicking, and I know it was a douche move, and I should never and I should have known better, for F's sake. Real life isn't the internet. You can't go around invading people's space and saying whatever you want. Anyway, I thought I'd share. Well, I guess the acorn doesn't fall far from the tree. Apparently, the kid learned this crap from his parents, because his parents are bullies, so he's a bully. And I'm glad that OP stood up for herself and stood up for her kid. And you know what? And I agree with her. If you're gonna wave your hands around in somebody's face, you're liable to get punched. I'm not saying I condone violence, but so you know, when tensions run high, and especially since, you know, this woman, who the hell does she think she is? I'm glad that OP stood up for herself. Anyway, that's all the stories I have today. Please stop on by Reddit to show the OP some love and an upvote. Links to the original stories will be in the description box below. If you enjoy my content, please like and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the bell notification to let you know when I've uploaded new content. Thank you for watching and have a great day.